This video is brought to you by Innovative Language, the creators of Indonesian Pod 101 and Filipino Pod 101. Click the link in the description to check out their huge collection of audio and video lessons for students of all levels. Hello everyone, welcome to the LangFocus channel and my name is Paul. Today we're going to compare Tagalog, otherwise known as Filipino, the lingua franca of the Philippines, and Indonesian, the lingua franca of Indonesia, the most widely spoken variety of Malay. Basically everything I say about Indonesian in this video will also apply to Malay because their standard forms are very close to each other, aside from some different vocabulary. But since I'm more familiar with Indonesian, the samples in this video will focus on Indonesian. Tagalog on the one hand and Indonesian and other forms of Malay on the other are not mutually intelligible, but native speakers of either language often say that they feel they should be able to understand the other language, but they can't. This is probably due to their similar pronunciation and intonation, and they might also hear some similar words in the other language, partly because of the common origins of the two languages. Malay, including Indonesian, since they're essentially the same language, and Tagalog, are both members of the Malayo-Polynesian branch of the Austronesian language family. That means they developed from the same language, Proto-Malayo-Polynesian, from which all members of that branch descended. Speakers of Proto-Malayo-Polynesian first migrated from Taiwan to northern Luzon in the Philippines before spreading out across much of maritime Southeast Asia and the Pacific. Most of the languages of Philippines, and most of the languages of Malaysia and Indonesia, outside of Papua that is, also descended from Proto-Malayo-Polynesian. So at their core, Malay and Tagalog are related, though they've been diverging from each other for at least 4,000 years, and maybe much longer. During that time, they have developed their own features and have undergone different influences. Influences on Malay Sanskrit had a heavy influence on Malay vocabulary and literature, beginning in the 7th century, followed by Arabic in the 14th century, once Islam was established in the archipelago. Later on, Malay was influenced by English in British colonial territories, and Dutch in the Dutch colonial territories. Modern Indonesian, which began to be called Indonesian only in 1928, contains more Dutch influence, while Malay in Malaysia, Brunei, and Singapore contains more English influence. Influences on Tagalog One of the major influences on Tagalog was actually Malay, which served as a lingua franca throughout maritime Southeast Asia for centuries. So some of the similarities between Malay and Tagalog stem from their ancient common origin, and some of their similarities stem from the more recent influence of Malay on Tagalog. Then, the Spanish arrived in Philippines in 1521 and left a massive footprint on Tagalog and other Filipino languages. What percentage of Tagalog words come from Spanish? Estimates range from 20% to 33%. This definitely accounts for a lot of the difference in vocabulary between Tagalog and Malay and Indonesian. The Philippines also became a colony of the United States for several decades, beginning in 1898, and as a result, English is the second official language of Philippines, and Tagalog has many borrowings from English. Since I'm focusing on Indonesian for the samples, I'm simply going to refer to it as Indonesian from now on, rather than saying Indonesian and Malay all the time. Generally speaking, Indonesian and Tagalog are fairly different in terms of grammar and sentence structure. In terms of pronunciation, they're quite similar. Stop consonants in both Indonesian and Tagalog are unaspirated, meaning that there's no puff of air after the consonant the way there often is after p, t, and k in English. They both also lack v and f sounds, except for a small number of loanwords, but many speakers will pronounce them as b and p. They also have similar sets of vowels. Tagalog has five, a, e, i, o, u. And Indonesian has five vowel letters, but with six sounds because E is pronounced two ways, either as E or as a schwa, E. Uh. In terms of vocabulary, the majority of words are different, but there are also many similar words, including many common basic core words. For example, some personal pronouns and family vocabulary are similar. The words for I, Aku, Ako, You, singular, Ngkau, Kau, Ikau, Ka, We, Kami, Kami, Kita, Kita, in Indonesian, this is we, including the listener, and in Tagalog, this means me to you, or we in the dual, you and me together. Child. Anak. Anak. Male. Lelaki. Laki laki. Lelaki. There are also numerous words related to household and everyday life. Bowl. Mangkuk. Mangkok. 
mosquito net. Kalambu. Kalambo. You'll notice that oftentimes, where there's an u sound in one language, there will be an o sound in the other. Door. Pintu. Pinto. Pintuan. Table. Meja. Mesa. The Tagalog word is a Spanish loan, and they also say la mesa. The Indonesian and Malay word is also a loan from Portuguese mesa. Ladle. Sandok. Sandok. And in Malay and Indonesian, this also means spoon. Nature words: rock or stone. Batu. Bato. Wind. Angin. Hangin. Sky. Langit. Langit. Fire. Api. Apoi. You'll notice that e at the end of a word in Malay and Indonesian sometimes corresponds to oi in Tagalog. Pig. Babi. Baboy. Crocodile. Buaya. Buaya. Numbers and units of time. Moon or month. Bulan. Buan. Week. Minggu. Linggo. The Tagalog word comes from the Malay word, and the Malay word is from Portuguese Domingo. Year. Tahun. Taon. Four. Empat. Apat. Five. Lima. Lima. Six. Enam. Anim. Thousand. Ribu. Libo. Parts of the body. Eye. Mata. Mata. Face. Muka. Muka. Brain. Otak. Utak. Basic states and emotions. Hope. Asa. Asa. Sick or sickness. Sakit. Sakit. Delicious. Sedap. Sarap. In Tagalog, this is the most common word you see in advertisements and so on. In Indonesian, enak is more common. To be afraid. Takut. Takut. To laugh. Tawa. Tawa. Salamat. Safety. Salamat. In Tagalog, its basic meaning is thank you. Whereas in Malay and Indonesian, it's often used in greetings like salamat pagi, meaning good morning. Other basic verbs to read baca basa enter masuk pasok. It's worth pointing out that m and p are both bilabial sounds. They are both articulated with your lips together, so it would be easy for one sound to gradually change into the other. To drink minum inom to open buka buka to help. Tolong. Tolong. Of course, I've been intentionally pointing out words that are similar, but I want to be clear that most words are not the same. So let's look at some sentences in either language so that we can compare their sentence structures, but we can also see a more representative sample of their vocabulary in general. These sentences mean my child likes cats. First in Indonesian, anakku suka kucing. Word for word, it's child my like cats, and in Tagalog. Mahilig ang anak ko sa mga pusa. Word for word, it's like focus marker child my two plural marker cat. One part here seems similar. Anak ko. Anak ko. But we could change this word here pusa to kuting, which means kitten. Then the sentences would be even more similar. We can see that Indonesian is basically S V O at its core. S V O. Tagalog is basically V S O. But another way to think of it is as predicate subject, because it's not always a verb in this position. In fact, this word here, mahilig, is not actually a verb. It's an adjective meaning fond of. But a verb would appear here in the same position. Basically, these two pieces of the sentence are reversed in Indonesian and Tagalog. That's the more common and natural word order in Tagalog. But there's also an inverted word order that's more similar to Indonesian, but is generally considered less natural and is used less often. Ang anak ko ay mahilig sa mga kuting. The subject here, ang anak ko, comes at the beginning, followed by the inversion marker ay, followed by the predicate. This is less common and more formal, but probably more intuitive for an Indonesian speaker and for English speakers as well. Notice that the Tagalog sentence has this word that the Indonesian sentence doesn't have, ang, a focus marker. This comes before the focus of the sentence, whether it's the subject or the object. Another thing the Indonesian sentence doesn't have is a plural marker like menga. In Indonesian, the plural can be shown with reduplication like kucing kucing, but it's not always used. Of course, Indonesian also lacks an inversion marker like the word ai in Tagalog. In general, Tagalog features more little function words and particles than Indonesian does, especially standard Indonesian. Colloquial Indonesian has some more little words like that. Verbs. One difference between Indonesian and Tagalog verbs is that in Indonesian they have no conjugations for tense or aspect, 
while Tagalog verbs are conjugated for aspect, though neither language has different conjugations for person and number. Let's look at a quick example with Indonesian masuk and Tagalog pasok, meaning enter. These sentences mean he entered the school. In Indonesian, dia masuk ke sekolah. And in Tagalog, pumasok siya sa eskwelahan. In the Tagalog verb, there's an infix, um, which is used for completed actions. But there's nothing like that in the Indonesian verb. If we want to talk about an action that's happening now, like he's entering the school, it's like this. In Indonesian, dia sedang masuk ke sekolah. And in Tagalog, pumapasok siya sa eskwelahan. If we want to talk about an action that hasn't happened yet, like he will enter the school, it's like this. In Indonesian, dia akan masuk ke sekolah. And in Tagalog, papasok siya sa eskwelahan. Notice that in Indonesian, the verb itself doesn't change, but rather an aspect marker comes before the verb, and it may be left out if the context makes it clear already. In Tagalog, the verb itself is inflected differently. You may also notice that some of the Tagalog inflections are infixes. In the first case, um, and in the second case, there's a doubling of the first syllable followed by the infixing of um. Indonesian verbs do not have infixes. There are numerous prefixes and suffixes which change the meaning of the verb in different ways, for example, by making it transitive or causative or passive, but there's nothing for tense or aspect. Actor focus and patient focus. In Tagalog, verbs are either actor focus or patient focus. That means they have different conjugations depending on whether the focus of the sentence is on the doer of the action or the receiver of the action. For example, the student read a science book. Bumasa ang estudyante ng libro sa agham. This is actor focus. So the focus is on the student, the doer of the action. Binasa ng estudyante ang libro sa agham. A student read the science book. This is patient focus. So the focus is on libro, the receiver of the action. You can see that the verb inflections that are infixed to the root are different for actor focus and patient focus. You can also see that there are two words that are switched in either sentence, ang and nang. Ang is the in-focus marker, and nang is the out-of-focus marker. As a quick side note, I should point out that the noun with the in-focus marker, ang, is often interpreted as definite, whereas the noun with the out-of-focus marker is often interpreted as indefinite. But definiteness can be changed by adding additional words, like isang, meaning one. And it can also be understood from context, based on what has been previously mentioned. Indonesian doesn't exactly have actor focus and patient focus like Tagalog does. It does have something similar but simpler, a distinction between subject focus and object focus. Subject focus is the basic type of sentence, like this sentence meaning, a student read a science book. Mahasiswa membaca buku sains. Technically, Indonesian has no definite or indefinite articles, so the nouns here could also be considered definite, but we could more explicitly express definiteness by adding nya, which means its, to either noun or to both. Mahasiswanya membaca buku sainsnya. Or you could use the demonstrative pronoun itu, meaning that. Object focus usually places the object first. Buku sains dibaca mahasiswanya. A science book was read by the student. Alternatively, this could be Buku sains yang dibaca mahasiswanya. A science book is what the student read. Notice that in Indonesian, there are no markers that show focus or lack of focus, like there are in Tagalog. We usually know whether it's subject focus or object focus based on which one comes first. In an object focus sentence in the third person, the prefix D attaches to the verb. But in the first and second person, any prefix is dropped from the verb. Buku sains yang saya baca. A science book is what I read. Notice that the verb baca doesn't have its usual prefix mm because the sentence is object focus, and it doesn't have the prefix d because that's only for third person. In Tagalog, all the personal pronouns are different depending on whether they are in focus or out of focus. The out of focus ones are actually genitive pronouns because they're also used as possessives. In Indonesian, most personal pronouns are the same, regardless of whether they are the focus of the sentence or not. 
as you can probably see, Tagalog on the one hand and Indonesian and Malay on the other clearly have some similar features that show that they are related, such as their similar pronunciation and similar core basic vocabulary. But it's also obvious that they have diverged so much that they are not mutually intelligible with each other, partly because of their different sentence structure and partly because of their largely different vocabulary. It's worth remembering that Tagalog is just one language of the Philippines and that there are many languages spoken in Indonesia and Malay-speaking countries like Malaysia and Brunei as well. Tagalog and Malay and Indonesian are not necessarily the two most similar languages from those countries. The question of the day. For speakers of Tagalog and Malay and Indonesian, how well do you understand speakers of the other language? Do you understand anything? Do you recognize some words when you hear the other language? Let us know in the comments down below. If you're interested in learning Indonesian or Filipino, I recommend you click the link in the description to check out Indonesian Pod 101 or Filipino Pod 101. They have hundreds of audio and video lessons with full transcripts for students of all levels. Sign up for a free account and give it a try. And a special thanks goes out to my Patreon supporters, especially these ones right here on the screen. They are my top tier Patreon supporters, and that's why they're in the video. So many special thanks to them. And to everyone, thank you for watching and have a nice day.